What's good everybody, I'm Keandre, this is Hoop Intellect, and welcome back to the channel. Now as you can tell by the title of the video, we're going to be talking about the 2023 NBA Draft with a very early big board, and the emphasis should be on very early because it is. I've only been able to watch about a handful to maybe a dozen games of these players over the last couple of years, and things change, there's always a heavy freshman influence in these, and uh... It's July 27th, so it's definitely more of a watch list at this point. Now, we won't do another one of these for probably about two to three months as we get closer to the college and pro seasons, but I also didn't want to oversaturate and over explain on a lot of things that are mostly early impressions, so we kept it to a reasonable number of players at this point. But yeah, there's a lot of unique talents, high level athletes, potential stars in this one. I'm excited. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new, and let's go ahead and get into it. So there will be a ton of names on the screen here soon as there should be at this point. I went back and forth about how long to make this video, but I shortened it to 35 players just to keep it reasonable at this point with guys like Yohan Traore, Eric Gaines, Jet Howard, Mike Miles, Tyrese Hunter, Marcus Sasser were all in the top 45 version. And I also like players like Ricky Council headed to Arkansas, Ryan Rupert going to the New Zealand Breakers, and Bobby Clintman out of Sunrise headed to Wake Forest. You've also got older guys like the Oscar Shibwe, Chris Murray, Kevin McCullough, Jalen Wilson, that should be staples in the college game at the very least. And sophomore returners such as Amani Bates, Matthew Cleveland, Jordan Hawkins, Alex Fudge, Trey Alexander, and others who will all have a great chance to break out. City Sissoko is the first European born prospect to join the G League Ignite program, and he'll add to what's already a very interesting and unique cast of players around Scoot Henderson. He's a 6'7 wing out of France, fluid athlete, can handle it some, shooting is a work in progress, but he'll certainly be one to watch as a potential first round pick over the next year. Julian Phillips is another big time prospect headed to Tennessee. Phillips played at what might be a new powerhouse in Link Academy last year and was a McDonald's All-American. It's a 6'7 athletic wing with the tools to be dynamic on both ends. Definitely one worth keeping your eye on when the season comes around and someone I think could end up much higher than this. Terrence Arsenault is the first of two Houston freshmen we'll talk about in this one. Arsenault is a four-star recruit out of Beaumont, Texas who makes an impact on the wing at 6'6". He does his most significant work defensively and as a slasher offensively. I think he's been underrated in a lot of ways in terms of the rankings even after being a standout in the EYBL last year. And whether it's this year or potentially next year, I think he has the first round type of ceiling. JJ Starling already has significantly more buzz than the Branhams and Wesleys who were underrated one and dones last year, and he was of course a McDonald's All-American, but he should probably be in more draft conversations than he has been to this point. He was a dynamic shot making guard at 6'4 coming out of La Lumiere, then headed to Notre Dame, and I'd also say he for sure has first round type of potential. Judah Mintz is a 6'4 guard out of Oak Hill headed to Syracuse. He really popped last summer in the EYBL for me personally, especially some of the things he did in his matchup against Shaden Sharp. He's a crafty guard, a playmaker who can shoot it a little but excels from the mid range and has great upside defensively. A definite high level guard to keep tabs on out in the ACC. Akron's own Chris Livingston is headed to Kentucky. He was a McDonald's All-American as a 6'6 wing, played with Oak Hill as a senior, and going forward has a lot to like, especially defensively, as an athlete, and with some of his creation. I'm unsure what type of role he'll take on this year under Coach Cal, but I'm excited to see where his game is at to this point. Julian Strother is a pretty safe bet at being someone with the Christian Brown, Wendell Moore type of upperclassmen stock this year. He got off to a great start last year in what was his first real featured season with Gonzaga. Solid season overall, but I think he'll be in the first round mix in 2023 as a complimentary wing with high shooting upside. Kyle Filipowski is a super skilled big heading to Duke and a major piece of John Shire's first recruiting class. At 6'10", 6'11", he's a big time shooter, can pass it and handle it some as well. I don't have the strongest opinions on him right now. Really got to watch him in the 3 on 3 a couple years ago and some of his post-grad stuff last year. But I'm curious to see how he works next to Lively next year, especially defensively, and everything else will go from there. 
6'10 big man James Najee is one of the better international talents and a pretty strong class of them. He's a good athlete, solid lob threat, physically developed, who really makes his mark defensively for Barcelona. He became the youngest player ever to put up five blocks in a game in the ACB at just 17 years old. Lottery type upside in the best case scenario, and he should be a fun player to watch going forward. At about 6'10", Adam Bona is a tremendously athletic center out of prolific prep headed to UCLA. He just started playing a few years ago and it shows at times, but his recent performances in the U20s for Turkey has been terrific and I guess he'll be in the convo for top bigs outside of Wimby. Amari Bailey has been one of the more popular high school players of the last several years after making that move out to Sierra Canyon. He's a high energy lefty combo guard at 6'4", headed to UCLA. It's aggressive, good downhill with great upside defensively. And we'll see what his minutes and outside shot looks like in Westwood next year. Australian guard Tyrese Proctor was originally set to join the Duke Blue Devils as a member of the 2023 high school class, but he instead classed up and I think he should be on 2023 draft radars. He's got excellent shot creating potential, high level upside as a shooter, solid feel as a passer that I like as well. I'm a big fan of his game and I think he brings an element that's a little different than what you usually see from Duke's guards. He performed well in the Asia Cup this summer, and hopefully we'll see him continue that going into the fall. While I was watching for Nikola Jovic and later Karlo Makovic, Nikola Jurisic proved himself to be as good a prospect as anyone else on this team in my opinion. He's a 6'8 wing out of Serbia with high level ball handling, passing, and defensive upside. He just won MVP of the Adidas next gen tourney U18s. And if he can grow as a shooter and finishing off plays, I think it'll be tough to keep him out of that lottery area. Nate Oates and Alabama have yet another big time recruit coming in next year and Brandon Miller. Miller is a 6'8 wing out of Tennessee, ranked in the top 10 to 15 of most scouting services. He's got a smooth game, good athlete who can handle it a little, scores well from the mid-range, has the potential to grow as a shooter from three, and is versatile defensively. He's got a lot of the tools that you're looking for at his position. Now, Leonard Miller was one of the late risers of the 2022 draft class when it was announced that he'd be draft eligible, but he decided to take his talents to the G League Ignite for a year, and I think that's perfect for a guy as talented, but still with some necessary high-level development to be had. He's a 6'10 lefty wing creator who has shown the ability to handle the ball, make plays for others, and has the tools to be a problem defensively. I'd expect some up and downs, and it'll be interesting to see how he's used but he's a fun player to watch, if nothing else. I would expect to see a good portion of the guys in the top 20 of this list in the first round or so of the draft next year. Obviously, these are far from foolproof if you follow the channel or just follow the draft in general, but if there are any names to remember, these are a lot of the guys. Dylan Mitchell is an explosive high motor forward or wing headed to Texas out of Mount Verde Academy. At about 6'8", 6'7", his current game resides somewhere between an early Oubre and Derek Jones Jr. As an aggressive athletic lefty who makes an impact off the ball, has a motor that's always running and takes pride in his defense. He'll be an interesting one to watch given he's not been a real threat from the outside just yet. But as an explosive play finisher and defender, he has a chance to make first round noise. Now to Kansas wing Grady Dick at number 19. I've actually known Grady for a long time. He played in high school with my younger brother. I was teammates with his older brothers I played against and with him in countless pickup sessions over the years and it's been really dope to see someone get to this level as a player up close. He's always been one of the most talented players in the region regardless of age, but really continued to elevate his game the last couple years since he made the decision to go to Sunrise where he eventually became the Gatorade player of the year. Nike Hoop Summit participant, McDonald's All-American, and now an NBA draft prospect. He fits really well at KU. I think he has the potential to be one of, if not the best shooter in the draft, and he does a little of everything well at 6'7". I can see him landing anywhere from the late lottery to the late first whenever he declares, but he's for sure a high level talent. Now Jordan Walsh is the first of three Arkansas freshmen we'll talk about in this one. He's a 6'8", five-star wing who spent his senior year at Link Academy. And in terms of NBA projection, I think he's been just a little underrated up to this point. He's a very good athlete with high potential as a wing defender, slasher, three-point shooter, and quietly as a playmaker. 
I'm curious to see where his self-creation goes, but he has the makings of a late lottery pick to me. He's in a great spot for his game style and personnel wise. Terquavion Smith should be a very familiar name if you followed the channel this past year, but in case you haven't, the 6'4 guard out of NC State proved himself to be what I felt was a first round talent as someone who was an electric pull up shooter and lightning quick athlete. He chose to go back to school for another season which I think could really work in his favor. If he can continue working on his body, improving as a finisher and on defense, I'm pretty confident he'll be in the lotto discussions and will ultimately have made a great decision going back to college for a year. A 6'10 a 6'10", 6'11", wing with a 7'3", wingspan and great fluidity. Baba Miller is kind of the quintessential Florida State prospect. He's been in the Real Madrid program for the last several years, but will be under the tutelage of Leonard Hamilton next season, which will also get him a few more NBA eyes just due to proximity in the States. He's still very raw, only about 205 pounds, but there's a lot to like with his upside in a similar way as a guy like an Usman Jane. I haven't seen but a handful of games from him, but He's definitely high on my watch list this upcoming season. Now Gregory aka GG Jackson is a 6'9 forward from Columbia, South Carolina. Originally ranked 6th in the 2023 high school class, recently just decommitted from UNC, decided to reclass and go to South Carolina this fall and he will be draft eligible next year. From what I've seen from a little bit of Team CP3, his state championship in the FIBA America's U18 stuff a few months ago, there's definitely a lot of potential there, and he's one to keep your eye on in the SEC. There are very few prospect program pairings I like more than Jarris Walker and Kelvin Sampson's Houston Cougars. Walker is a 6'8 forward out of IMG Academy who is a great athlete and has some encouraging creation and passing flashes at his size that add to his appeal as a prospect. I think he can become an elite defender playing for Coach Sampson and if we can tweak his jumper just slightly, he has eventual high level NBA player written all over him. We started the NIBC in an ad hoc school. Oh yeah, it's like Drew Felly also a Sunday morning YMCA game. Duke's Derek Lively has widely been considered the number one player out of this high school class. He's a listed 7'2 with a 7'7 wingspan and the ability to block shots with the best of them. He also has solid potential in space, encouraging abilities as a shooter and as a lob threat. He has some moments where he kind of floats and isn't the most physical guy, but he's got a lottery type of upside and anyone who could potentially give you that rim protection and floor spacing combination is going to draw a lot of eyes. Rising Creighton sophomore Arthur Kaluma had some eye-catching performances down the stretch of his freshman season, and especially against the eventual national champion Kansas Jayhawks. And I think he has a great chance to carry that into next season, and to be honest, he already kind of has playing with Uganda in the World Cup qualifiers. It's clear he's really been working on his game, might have figured some things out offensively, his control and pace looking better and better. He's simply got great potential as a 6'8 forward or wing who can make an impact on both ends of the floor. Anthony Black is another big time piece of Arkansas's upcoming stacked roster. He's a 6'7 point guard who has a knack for setting up his teammates. He's got high level defensive potential along with being pretty quick and creative for his size offensively. Now shooting is a huge swing skill for him. If he takes the next step there and it shows during his freshman year, I think he could end up a top 5-7 to seven guy. That's the type of ceiling that I think he has. On the flip side of that, it could be the reason he falls some from this area of the draft. But I'm very excited to watch him run the show next year and he's one of my early favorite players from this class. I think, I think Kentucky's Kaysen Wallace has a chance to be one of the better guard defenders of the last couple years, which is a pretty unique thing to say about a guard before they've even gone to college. He's a good athlete with a projectable jumper and complimentary creation and passing skills. And to me, he just feels like a safe early pick for the lottery. He's a definite big time player and if you enjoy defense in any way, he's likely going to be your guy. I think Keontae George has been a little underrated at this point in the process. This is again wildly early so it doesn't particularly matter that much. But I think he has lottery potential and shows some of that in the global jam with Baylor. He's a big body guard scorer at about 6'4", 6'5", coming out of the Dallas area and played for IMG Academy last season. He's built to put up buckets in multiple ways, creating for himself at an extremely high level. And he's got to be one of the most explosive scoring threats Scott Drew and the Baylor Bears have had. 
Kalel Ware is a talented seven footer headed to Oregon from Little Rock, Arkansas, where he was teammates with fellow potential lottery pick Nick Smith Jr. I just love his fluidity, the high level upside defensively, and his potential to sort of step into that versatile big man archetype that is only growing with the likes of Evan Mobley and Chet Holmgren succeeding recently and alongside a couple others in this class. I definitely want to see his engagement level at Oregon. That kind of came and went some in high school but the raw ability is there on both ends and he recently showed out alongside the next prospect in the u18 americas where he made the all-star five team that next guy is another potentially great player out of the dmv and that is villanova's cam whitmore and Cam could very well put his name into that top three conversation by the time next June comes around. He's another super athletic wing at about 6'7", who recently dismantled the competition in the FIBA Americas and won MVP. He's someone who has the tools to be a high-level two-way wing as he continues to progress as a shooter and creator. But overall, it's hard not to like who Cam has shown himself to be so far. And if you needed a reason to watch the Big East next year, he's your guy. Now coming in at number six, we have Asar Thompson, but I felt like we might as well talk about both of the twins at the same time. Now the OTE situation isn't ideal, at least in its infant stages as an organization, but them being this high is a testament to the type of potential they possess. And they do still represent some of the potential changing of the guard for American born paths to the league. They're both about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, with unbelievable athletic abilities, quick twitch, explosiveness, first step, all off the charts. And they're both really going to need to improve as shooters and just perimeter players over time. That's something I think could drastically swing things in terms of their draft projection. The big separators for us are, he wears number zero, he's a bit better defender, gives you more pressure at the point of attack, and was more willing to take mid ranges, shoot off the bounce, hesitated less from three, and has better touch to keep things simple. And then rank number three, wearing number one. Amin has a lot of the same elements, great anticipation defensively, not quite the same level on the perimeter, and not as willing as a shooter yet, but he's more inclined as a playmaker, and he does some absolutely wild things in that area. He's also a bit stronger, and I'd give him the edge athletically. Asar was a bit more impactful for last year but Amin has a higher ceiling to me as a ball handler potentially being a point guard and that's what's gone into their current ranking. I'm not glued to either one and in the macro they're still wildly similar but that's hopefully a decent intro into who they are as players. They're good best to go in the lottery and best case scenario the both of them could end up in the top five. The game clock play to a target score. Amen Thompson. Oh okay. Oh wait a minute. A guy we just mentioned a little earlier, Nick Smith Jr. is the third and final incoming star freshman for the Razorbacks. At 6'5", Smith is the prototypical athletic two guard who will boogie on you. He's creative with the ball. I think he's one of the most fun to watch in this class and he often put that on display in the All-American game circuits earlier this spring. What he does defensively and the level that he's on as a shooter could very easily put him in that third spot. But he should be a familiar name in the top 10. With all the different paths to the NBA present in this class, you can still bet on Duke having a guy in the mix at the top of the draft, and this year that's Dariq Whitehead. Dariq played at Montverde for what felt like forever considering he was teammates with everyone from RJ Barrett to Cade Cunningham, Scotty Barnes, Moses Moody, and Precious Achua over his high school career. But at 6'6", 6'7", he's a great athlete who has the potential to be high impact defensively versus multiple positions. He's been progressing as a shooter and scores the ball at a very high level. Should be a focal point for Duke next year and a candidate for the top parts of the draft. Okay, at the moment, I see most of everything else as up for grabs, the top two being the most appealing prospects out of this group. And at number two, we have Scoot Henderson. Scoot is a hyper-athletic guard at 6'2", 200, who spent last year as a member of the G League Ignite, classing up and playing part of the season at just 17 years old. Without knowing who he was, you wouldn't have been able to tell he was born in 2004. He's got a grown man's game, his ability to put pressure on the defense, make plays in the pick and roll for himself and others, his defensive capabilities, and just producing at a high level as a lead guard put him in the upper echelon of this draft class. While I currently have him number two, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of him taking over the next guy over time. He's that special and would have been my number one player in 2022 had that been a possibility. 
And coming in at number one, we have Victor Wimbanyama, aka Wimby. And like we were just saying, while Scoot and the field do have a chance of beating him out for the top spot, I'd still be somewhat surprised. So get ready to see him at the end of these videos in the next several months. He's listed at 7 2, but that man has to be a good 7 5. We just saw Chet tower over the Palos and Jabari's. Well, Wimby made Chet look 6'9", and in this infamous picture, he even makes a listed 7'4", Zach Eady of all people look like a regular size center. The physical attributes combined with his level of fluidity, some of the shot creation, and shooting ability, passing, and the ability to be an absolute presence defensively both around and away from the basket make him truly ridiculous. We have ourselves what could possibly be the most unique prospect ever, and this is no slight to Chet, but Wimby outclassed him in the U19s last year in a way that had me questioning this year's number two pick when it was really more about the level of guy that Wimby is and can be. He recently left Tony Parker's squad in a surprising move over to the Metropolitans to lower competition level which is interesting but the eyes will follow him and we'll look to see him keep progressing especially as a shooter and a scorer. I appreciate you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new around here, and comment down below some of your thoughts about the players in this class, maybe this class as a whole, or you know other thoughts that you have. But that's all I've got for this one. A lot of great content is on the way, so stay tuned for that. As always, I'm Keandre, this is Hoopin' Elect, and I'm out. I need my front, no advance, but tap in if you really bout it. I can be your motivation, I can be the one you call at the late nights on the grind.